Hi, this is Vicki Grove with Parnell, and I have come to share a dream with you that I had on the 27th. I journaled it, oh, it was last night. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Today is 328.24. This dream is entitled, A Present for the World Dream. Um, I received it at 327.24 and journaled it at 328.24 at 4 31 p.m and i would like for you to pray about it but before we get into this lord do you want me to do this first or after do it first i have a little bit more information that came from the lord the lord gives us pieces the lord jesus christ father god but the word instructs us to ask Matthew 18, ask and you shall receive. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and shew thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Now, he has been warning us, but there's times you've got to ask him for more information. And I have not asked him about this until I was questioning the Lord. What would, what, what would the colored lights be here? When the darkness comes because in every dream I've had I have not been at my location and it's always been dark I mean I, I'm not sure it could have been out in the field I I don't know it's just I've been in the open so today when we were I was praying I'm gonna see if I can get the, the time of this journal entry and then we're gonna pray and start at 9 38 a.m. is when I was praying and I've been praying about all this and I, I know as it's coming, what's coming, and, and as the Lord moves. But I was questioning because I had never asked him, would I see the vibrant lights, because I'm further away from the North Pole, or would I see less? You know, or however, whoever. So this is the information that I got. Please take it to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. I can just share it because this is all that I receive. Okay, you shall see small traces of the reflective colors, but not all shall see the vibrantly, the, them vibrantly. No one has asked me if all would see them vibrantly dancing in the sky. So I'm giving you this understanding now. Places that normally do not see them shall see them, but not as vibrant or colorful as those near the center of the North Pole. Uh, please take that to Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. And I apologize for not getting things out sooner. I have been under attack. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I have learned what's meant and sent by the enemy or allowed. Understand, allowed like Job. Allowed things can be allowed. If you trust in the Lord and stand in faith, he will use that for your glory. For his glory, excuse me, not my glory, his glory. I have no glory. I, <laughs> my hair, I do. Okay, <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I messed that one up. I'm so sorry. But with that being said, we're going to pray now. I just wanted to make sure that got out. I was going to do it sooner, but the Lord told me to go ahead and write this dream down. He wanted it out. And, um, his will be done. His will be done. I can only, Lord willing, make like a, a timid guideline on some things. But everything's just, you know, a moment's notice. It's changeable. The Lord says, change, move. It's done with his help. All right, so let's pray. Let's pray together. We as children of God are to pray together. And if you're not saved... I pray you get saved. I pray Jesus Christ speaks to your heart. That your heart be softened and your ears opened. Your eyes opened. Where you can hear, see in your heart. The Holy Spirit to deal with you. In Jesus Christ's name. Father God, I come in the name of Jesus Christ. I lay this before you, Lord. I've had confirmation upon confirmation about the information in this dream but i went to another source and they prayed and discerned the spirits and got the same exact thing i even went to 
the gematria because you sent me there put in certain words and got the same thing so father god i'm laying this before you and no i'm not going to share that where what seek the lord he can give it to you. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask again, you place us under the barrier of stealth and invisibility. Father, Lord, I've asked that and with no retaliation. And I thank you, Lord, because I realized something and I, and I thank you. My home is a sanctuary. We have dedicated to you. It is covered in the blood of Jesus. There's a wall of fire around it. There's a hedge of protection and angels guarding it. Holy angels of God. Nothing can get in it anymore. But I have learned also, Lord, and I thank you for this. And you show this to my son. You have given us armor, but it's you, Jesus Christ, that protects us according to Jude. The armor protects us against the wiles, the schemes, the plans. But it's you that does the protection. It is you, Father God, that's our strong tower. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if we do not put these things on the armor of God, then we are vulnerable still to these attacks. More so because the shield of faith, that's building up our faith. The helmet of salvation, that's our salvation in the mind of Christ. We've got to keep these things. Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Lead this prayer, Holy Spirit. And Father God, I say again, if this is not from you, shut me down. I stand on Acts 5. I do stand on Acts 5. Because it says in the word of God, Gamiel was speaking of the, I think he was a Sadducee. He was speaking, Pharisee or Sadducee? Pharisee. He was a Pharisee. Thank you, Lord. Because Paul was under him. It was a set was trained under him when he was Saul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing that to my remembrance. Holy, sweet Holy Spirit. But it says in Acts 5, if this ministry, if if Paul and, and the apostles, the ones that were being beat, if it's Peter, if they were of God, you cannot stop it. But if it is of flesh, if it is of man, then it shall surely fall. I lay this ministry into your hands, Lord. I lay my life. I surrender my life. I repent of any wrong, any sin. Jesus Christ, you are my everything, Father God. So you take this wherever it needs to go. I'm going to just simply walk obediently with your help and humbly in all that I do. Because, Lord, it's not about me. It's all about you. And the Lord being the Lord Jesus Christ, Father God. It's all about you. And for me, what I get is the most wonderful love and relationship that a person can have. Hallelujah. And Lord, I cancel every form of evil communication. Another thing you've been showing me, you showed my son too, and to get further with me, is every attack originates from some form of communication. Thoughts in the mind is where words form. Written, spoken, hand signal, they all come. So every form of evil communication from the kingdom of darkness, whether it be sending them to physical things like weapons, gizmos, gadgets, such like things, sent by demons, two demons, through witchcraft, woohoo, wahoo, garbage. That's what it is. It's garbage. It's garbage. Even the fallen ones cannot even do their woohoo wahoo much without demons sent to do it to people. So, Father God, I thank you for the sweet Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father God, for the power for, for the power to be able to stand in the name of Jesus Christ and take authority over these evil things in Jesus Christ's name. Even the human agents have to operate with demons inside them. Everything is subject to the name of Jesus Christ. Do we take great pleasure in that? We are thankful, but our joy is in Jesus Christ, knowing that through what you have done, our names are written in the book of life. Your Lamb's book of life, so that we can spend our eternity with you. One day, each at our own moment in time. 
We're going to stand before you and know it's all been worth it. As we look face to face in your eyes of love. And we see all just love, love. You're just love. The look of love you give it. it I don't have words. And to be in that forever, it will all be worth it. One day, it's going to all be worth it. I thank you, Lord, for your love. I thank you for your agape love, your unconditional love. In Jesus Christ's name, I love you, Lord, and I praise you. Lord, send this out. You want me to say that? I've been studying the month of March. And in the month of March is the, the Ides of March. Talked about with Julius Cedar and all that. But you got to set all that aside. What does Ides of March mean? Ides means full moon. Full moon of March. I don't know who that's for, but there you go. All right, this dream again. I journaled it. And if you hear my son, again, he's he's... Having some friends. Yeah. It is what it is. Again, I love to hear his laughter. For years I didn't hear it. Alright, 3, 28, 24, 4, 31 p.m. is when I journaled it. I had it at 3, 27, 24. It is now 10, 44 p.m. <laughs> on 3, 28, 24. I have, um... I have been, um, under attack. But God is faithful. And I'm still here. But and I apologize for not being able to put a whole lot out on the ministry pages and things. I did what I could. And um, I, I was still praying over the emails. So was Judith and Alfredo. So just, just know. Just know that when you stand on the truth and not the facts, victory is in sight. Here we go. This again is called a present for the world dream. And I'm asking you take this to Lord Jesus Christ in prayer because th there's going to be a lot of people with discernment going to catch something that just, yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Dear Jesus Christ, in your great name, my love, I'm here to write down the dream you gave me. Sweet Holy Spirit, dear friend, please help me to recall every detail. My lovely Jesus wants me to write down according to John 14, 26 and 1 John 2, 27. I will, daughter of Zion. I will. Okay, before we get into this, and yes, I'm going to drink. Bear with me. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, help me say this in love. The Lord Jesus Christ has instructed me on how to do these videos. So understand, there's still people that seem to, to have an issue with me drinking. I have no problem with it. This is how the Lord told me to do it. My voice has been attacked from the very beginning, but God is faithful and has kept it. But this is not story time. This is God's time. So if you have issues with me stopping and drinking, if it's tiring you out, if it's causing you to lose your focus, I went to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer again, and this is what he said, and I'm going to share it so it goes out to everybody. Read the PDF. Get the same message. You will still get the word. If you don't wait for the PDF in a few hours, you can pull the transcribe. And then you will not have to be hindered because I have to drink due to the attacks I've been enduring. Okay? But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And there's coming a moment in time getting ready to burst forth where I will not have to deal with this nonsense anymore. I have not been stopped. And I will not be stopped because I'm going in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm surrendering myself to him. And what he says goes out will go out one way or the other. So please, and I say that in love, I'm just, 
understand, please. I am not changing the way I do anything unless I am told by Jesus Christ, Father God, or Holy Spirit, an angel of God. If I try and discern, this is definitely from the Lord. This is definitely what you want. And sometimes I'll try it even more if it's something that's he's set for so long. I'm not doing it for anybody. I wouldn't even do it for my mother. And I, I loved my mother. I would not. His way. This is how it's going to be done. If you have an issue with it, please take it to Jesus Christ. It's just, that's, that's it. I went to him again. Same answer. I'm done. This is how it's going to be done. Unless he says otherwise. And again, I'm not trying to be ugly or mean. If you're having issues refocusing, if you were sitting in a church service and the preacher's preaching and he rocks over and he gets him a drink out of a bottle of water or something because he's been preaching, would you tell him to stop? I'm just asking him, just an example. Or singers on stage, they take, you know, sometimes a drink of water in between. This is not story time. This is Jesus Christ time. This is Father God time. All right. Is that all I need to say, Father? Okay, he said it's it. I want to try it before I went any further. <clears throat> okay, this is a dream. It began with me looking at a box. A great big box wrapped up like a gift or a present with a large gold bow on the top. One made of many loops that look like the shape of a dome. You know, the big puffy bows. Yeah. The paper is red and the design upon the paper is various wrapped gifts, all the same shape but different colors except every bow was made of gold ribbon it's the same bow as on the big package i didn't write that down though there is no ordinary size box excuse me this is no ordinary size box though it's sitting outside in trees freshly budding and little grass colored covered hills not mountains but hills of various sizes that open up into a valley i can see behind it I'm standing a good distance away from it, and I'm already amazed at the size of this box. Should I go closer and examine more to see if there's a name tag upon it? I asked myself, but then continued. If it has a name, excuse me, if it has a name tag and it's on the top, I will never be able to reach it. Because it's as tall as some of the nearby standing trees. I looked around to see if there's anyone around. I can ask who this humongous package belongs to. There's no one around. Lord Jesus Christ, sweet Holy Spirit. Your word says in Proverbs 3, 5, 6. For to trust you. And lean not to my own understanding. To acknowledge you in all my ways. And you will direct my path. Meaning, telling me where I need to go. Please tell me if I should examine the box closer. Or if it's a trap. From the kingdom of darkness. Of Lucifer. Of Satan. And I should turn around very quickly and walk away. I'm curious, but I'm not assuming this box is for me, or that I should proceed to examine it closer. The wind picked up, blowing strongly, but not in a forcible, damaging way, and then suddenly it stopped. I heard these words spoken as a still, small, but powerful voice. You are to proceed to the package, little daughter. And take a good look. Then tell me. What. You see. Spare none of the detail. 
I will, I replied out loud to the voice of my God, Father God in heaven. The wind blew again, but this time ever so slightly, and brushed across my face a kiss from heaven. From Father God, I always call the wind when it does this. Thank you, Father God, I said out loud. But no response came. It didn't have to. I know my Father loves me. I looked at the box, and with great determination, I began walking toward the colorful, decorated red box with the huge gold bowl, sit bow sitting on top of it. As I began walking, I realized two things. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord, for the water. I love water, Lord. Thank you. I realized two things. The box is further away than I first thought, and it's bigger, too. As I walk closer with each step, it grows in its size. Finally, I reach the humongous box, sitting in a grassy valley, wrapped in red wrapping paper and a huge, large golden bow. I looked up at the box, and it looks like it could easily be three story stories high, if it were a building. I looked at the ground while I'm standing where I'm standing, and there is no tire tracks on this side. I walk around the great box and look at the ground on all sides. There are no traces of any vehicle. Bringing it here or dropping it off. It must have been set here by air. But I'm not sure what could land it here with its bulky size. In addition, I saw there are no parachutes, balloons, or strings that might give some clue to where the box came from. Hmm, I said. Then I reached over and touched the side of the box. <coughs> Excuse me. I repeat that in the name of Jesus. The wrapping paper feels cool to the touch, like any other regular wrap package I've ever seen before. I pressed my ear against the package, and I thought I heard a faint sound from within. Huh? I exclaimed. As I pulled my head back from the box. That can't be right, I said, and then quickly I added. But I'm not going to assume that's not possible. Assuming without asking Father God or Jesus Christ for their truth always gets me into trouble. It's stinking thinking when I let my own thoughts and assumptions get in the way. I have to drink this instead. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Cover my throat, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. I apologize for the interruptions. All right. In addition, I saw there are no parachutes, balloons, or or strings that might give some clue to where the box came from. Hmm, I said. Then I reached over and touched the side of the box. I apologize for redoing. The wrapping paper feels cool to the touch like any other regular wrap package I have seen before. I pressed my ear against the package, and I thought I heard a faint sound from within inside. Huh? I exclaimed as I pulled my head back from the box. That can't be right, I said, and then quickly I added, but I'm not going to assume that's not possible. Assuming without asking Father God or Jesus Christ for the truth always gets me into trouble. It's stinking thinking when I let my own thoughts and assumptions get in the way. I apologize. For I didn't mean to read all that again. I felt compelled to press my ear back against the side of the great red box. Again, the wrapping paper was cool to my face and ear. I heard nothing, yet I kept my ear pressed against the package side. Suddenly, I heard noises like movements inside. Father God, I said, but before I could continue, I felt like it felt like something hit the side of the box from the inside. 
Daddy God, Daddy God, I exclaimed. There's movement inside. I heard noises too. Am I correct? I heard the gentle reply once again. Yes, you are. What do I do? What do I do? I asked excitedly. Is it alive? Daddy God, what do I do? You opened the package, came his sweet, gentle reply. Okay, but how? But no reply came. I looked at the box thinking, how can I get that package opened? I tried to tear the wrapping paper the wrapping paper forgot paper sorry wrapping paper but for some reason i couldn't get it to tear i pulled on one of the gold ribbons that ran down each side of the package originally from the ground from the grand bow on the top you know how a bow a package has the ribbons coming up on each side and then ties up that's what i was pulling on let me make that very clear I pulled the ribbon again and nothing happened. I tried to push the box over with all my strength. It wouldn't budge. Not even a tiny bit. In my frustration, I kicked the box. <laughs> I have moments too. Immediately, I felt remorse and I cried out, Daddy God, please forgive me. I shouldn't have kicked the box. Please help me, your word says in Matthew 7, 7. If I ask, I would receive. I'm asking you to help me because I can't do it on my own. And this is really pointing out to me, asking. Immediately, the wind began blowing hard, so hard my clothes whipped against me. Then it suddenly stopped. What good will that do, I asked. Father God, throwing my head back to look up at the sky. That's when I saw it. The wind had blown from the top three pieces of ribbon ends that had been previously upon the top of the box. And they're long. Oh, I said in surprise. To undo a bow, you pull the ribbon ends. Thank you, Daddy God. Please forgive me for not waiting to see what you had done before I questioned you in a complaining manner. I heard Daddy God respond, <clears throat> All is forgiven, little daughter. Thank you, I replied, and then went to examine the three ribbon ends. Two of the ends are just that, cut ribbon edges, but the one in the middle has a folded tag attached to it. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. A very large card is attached to it. But I was still able somehow to manage to lift the top upward as the ribbon held the card's weight. Thank you, Lord. It says, pay attention, please. It says, to the world your time has come don't open until it's a good day to rest some will pray while others will play when this time comes a good day as march winds blow this present i give to thee give to the world from me a good day taken from a bad. A good day as March winds blow. This gift is given to all the world by me. You worked hard at earning all that's inside. And it's signed. Father God, Jehovah, the great I am, creator of all. Daddy God! This gift is from you, I exclaimed. Is this a good day to open it? The March winds have been blowing. I looked around at the beautiful day with the trees beginning to have 
little buds upon them and the green grass over the little hills and land. It looked like a normal, perfect day as far as nature is concerned in this area. Life as usual. I turned my attention back to the box as I let go of the large excuse me, as I let go of the large card identifying this package, this gift as being given to our world, our whole world. I reached over and grabbed one of the other loose ends loose ended ribbons on the right. I gave it a good pull. Nothing happened. Undeterred, I grabbed both of the loose ribbons and that, that were hanging on the right and the left of the ribbon holding the card. I walked backwards until they were pulled taunt, then pulled with all my might. The bow held fast. Now what? I asked out loud. Here, let me help you, I heard a man's voice say to me. I looked around, excuse me, I looked toward the sound of the voice, and the man is walking toward me. He said quickly, it's going to take two people to do this job. We can unwrap this package together. What's in it, he asked, as he reached the box side, where I'm still holding both of the loose ribbon ends in my hands. It's a gift from Father God to our world, I replied with a small smile. I know this man's face. I have seen him in night dreams or night visions they are called before. Sometimes called before. Excuse me. Oops. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Then let's get it open, he said quickly. We mustn't keep the Father waiting. I nodded my head in agreement and handed him one of the loose ribbon ends. You walk toward the right, and I'll go to the left, he said. Then continued, The bow will not come undone unless pulled from both sides at the same time. We can do it together. He finished saying, The Lord's will be done in all things, I replied. I walked to the right side of the box and the man to the left. I yelled out, on the count of three, let's pull them together. The man nodded his head, yes, as he walked to the left. We're both holding our ribbons pulled tight in an outward direction from the box. One, two, three, I counted, and we pulled with all our might working together as a team as one in unity the bow was quickly removed off the top of the box there is a whooshing sound excuse me there is a whooshing noise like the rush of air being released the box top opens and out bursts forth so many things that i can't see before my face it's dark then I saw asteroids, fireballs, shooting stars, seas dry up while waters turn blood red. The earth shakes, locusts comes out, and people appear. Mushroom clouds erupt from the head. Mushroom, cl mushroom clouds erupt. From the heavens come mighty storms, thunder, lightning, and hell. I heard the sound of trumpets blaring, and so much more. It all came rushing out with a mighty force. Then suddenly, the green valley reappeared. The still standing box, now empty, stands still for a moment. Then all four sides of the box's wall falls flat backwards. It's done, I said out loud. The man shook his head in agreement. We heard well done. My day has arrived from the heavens. Suddenly the wind around us picked up fiercely and a wind tunnel forms around us and we are both picked up, the man and I. 
as we are being lifted up in the air by the whirlwind, I awoke. Please pray about this. Here are the verses. Psalms 133.1 Ecclesiastes 4, 9-12 First Corinthians 1, 10 Zechariah 14, 7 Amos 3, 3 2 Kings 2, 11 Galatians 6, 7 through 9. James 2, 13. Psalms 96, 13. Jude 9. All right, there's one chapter in Jude. John 12, 31. John 12, 48. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Ezekiel 7, 7 through 8. Isaiah 2, 12. Joel 1, 5. Isaiah 60, 1 through 2. All right. She please pray about this in Jesus Christ's name alone. Thank you, Lord. We have a lot to pray about. If I could give any personal advice to anybody, I would say refocus on Jesus Christ. With all that's coming, mad rush for preparations or, or last minute things or, or still preparing for, for down the road war and don't lose sight of Jesus Christ, Father God. You can get so busy trying to do the good that you lose sight of who, who you're trusting. you got to trust in Jesus Christ and not yourself. Refocus. Refocus on Jesus Christ and Father God. You want to reach your family? If you're praying for your lost Make sure your relationship with Jesus Christ lines up with this Word of God. What do you mean by lines up? It means you're doing, you're being obedient the best that you can with His help. None of us are perfect. Understand that none of us are perfect. But you are doing what you what what you know to do. You're reading, you're praying, you're fasting, you're praising, you're worshiping, you're studying. You have the law of, you know, the the law of kindness in your mouth. The law of kindness, you bless your your enemies. You know, I didn't make my enemies. They chose to be my enemies. Regardless, you know when people like you and when they don't. Pray for them. Because remember, if they're not saved, until they're saved, they're being influenced by the kingdom of darkness, by Lucifer, by Satan. They're they're being influenced. And all these attacks and all these things, if you focus on who the real enemy is and not the person before you, you'll be able to pray more for that soul. If they're a savable soul, you'll be able to pray more for that. Get past the fact of the 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 face the the face screaming at you or pointing their finger at you, cursing you. Get past that and realize if they're savable, and I say that because we all know there's things going on in this world. That soul's crying out. That soul needs Jesus Christ. There is a a time and a purpose for everything, according to Ecclesiastes three. But when you're presented with somebody in your life and you feel a and you know that you're called to talk to them, you better talk to them. Well, my friend gonna make them mad. If you're called to talk to that person and you're afraid you're gonna they're gonna you're, they're gonna be mad at you, would you rather have their blood required on your hands? 
What if your disobedience causes someone to not make it? It's serious. Again, it goes the other way. If you're wanting to talk to somebody, but the Holy Spirit is telling you to hold off to wait, that's why you got to be led by the Holy Spirit. You need to. Why? Because most likely he's still dealing with the heart and they're not ready to hear it yet and receive it. But never underestimate the value of a seed planted in Jesus Christ's name. Never. And a lot of times I've learned lately, I start praying, Lord, let those seeds take root and grow. Father God, water them. Let them grow. Let them become the predominant plant and, and outgrow the weeds. You know? Precise, effective prayer. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What does that mean? A non stopping, praying, precision prayer. I hear what he mean. Give me an example. Jesus Christ, what kind of example can I use? This is okay. Say, for instance, you've had a tooth pull and you have a dry socket. But you're saying, oh, my, my, my mouth hurts. But instead of just saying, Lord, take, you know, take pain away. Why don't you say, Lord, that exposed nerve because it's a dry socket. Please, deaden that exposed nerve or whatever needs to happen to that nerve because a dry socket means you've had a tooth pulled and that nerve is still exposed. All you're feeling is terrible, horrific pain most of the time. You know, it just, and it just like kind of goes through your whole head. I've had several. You just, every time I get a tooth pulled, it would have a dry socket. Praise the Lord. God's good in all things. But the precision effective prayer, instead of being vague with your prayer, I've got a headache. Please pray for me, I've got a headache. When it could be an all out migraine. I mean, there's different levels. Okay, she's got a headache. Well, that's a common thing. Migraines put people in bed. Migraines make people where they can't work. It is an attack, but still pray effectively. Pray effectively. And you do that by asking the Holy Spirit to lead you. Because he knows the circumstances. He's God's Spirit. He knows the circumstances surrounding each thing. Is it something you ate? Sometimes you can eat that can cause you to have headaches. You know, something that we've done ourselves is an attack by demons is it a physical attack by all these gizmos and gadgets and weapons and things start determining you know start asking seeking ask 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 i've been asking the lord i've been telling the lord i need understanding i need understanding because there's so much he's telling me my head's so full i need understanding and then he stopped me today and that's why he gave me the rest about that little bit about the third day's doctor he said i know you need understanding you need to ask me for it. I'm like, oh. But he's right. Of course he's right. He's, he's God. But I had, I just said, Lord, I need, I need wisdom. I need discernment. I need, I need so I can be do all you've called me to do. But it specifically says in the Bible to ask and you shall receive. In John 14, let me read that. It goes even further. If you're a child of God, and you're living for Jesus Christ. I'm in Matthew. And this is what scripture says. This is the truth. Not facts. You know, the worldly facts. This is the truth. I'm shaking. I'm sorry. John 14. 13 and 14. I'm going to grab 13 too because I love it. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. When you ask in Jesus Christ's name, it brings glory to the Father. Okay, bit 14. If ye shall ask anything, anything in my name, I will do it. Now again, this does not mean your frivolous, frivolous little, I need a million dollars question, you know. Unless you really have a need for a million dollars. <coughs> Hear me, because... You're lining your, your life up with the Lord. Or you're just learning. The Lord will meet you at your level where you're at. 
Are you just beginning on the milk? Or are you starting to chew and got meat? More understanding of the Word of God. A lot of people still on the milk when they should be eating meat. Should be on steak by now, excuse me. Excuse me. Or fresh vegetables for those that like don't like meat. <laughs> you know what it is. You should be. When you line your life up with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you pray in his name. You are to expect him to answer. But don't expect him to answer the way you want it done. He will answer it the way that's best for everybody involved. <coughs> Excuse me. A good example of that is Lazarus. Lord, I didn't know we're going in on this. I'm so sorry. Lazarus was dead. Mary and Martha sent word to Bethany. You know, come to Bethany. Our brother is sick. He gets that, I think, like, and, and waits. And it's four days before he shows up. And he's dead. Lazarus is dead. And Martha says, I I know you're the resurrection when it's when it comes time, but he said, I am the resurrection. It's in John eleven. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's the name of Jesus. Because John eleven thirty five it says Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible, but the thing about that, most people says he's weeping and grieving with them. Well, yes he is too. But he's also grieving over their unbelief their doubt and their disbelief after all that they have seen excuse me thank you lord i rebuke you devil in jesus christ's name cancel all machines and all devices in jesus christ's name weapons and such like in all existence known to god as god exists everywhere thank you lord all right I'm not going to apologize. It is what it is. We're going to get through this. In Jesus Christ's name. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. So in the name of Jesus, I cancel this device. What is it, Lord? <coughs> I cancel all wave devices in the name of Jesus Christ. Send them back to them, Lord. No effect. No effect in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you. So with Lazarus. Lazarus is dead. And it looked like to his sisters. To everybody. They had all the mourners there and all. Whole community gathered. Jesus Christ failed. If you loved them so much. Why could you not save him? If you could save this one. Why could you not heal him? Why could you not call come when you were called when you were you know beckoned or summons please come? His ways are not our ways. His ways are higher. His thoughts are not our thoughts. In the end, he knew he was going to raise Lazarus. He knew he was dead. But they were hard hearted and standing there in disbelief. The resurrection power. Jesus Christ had the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit inside him standing there and, and they, they doubt it. But he had that stone called back four days so he stinks wrapped up. Yet weather is hotter, you know. It was hot enough for his body to stink within four days as Martha said, Lord, by now his, his body stinketh, you know, or stinks. KJV says stinketh. But then, Jesus has shown them, I'm not four days late, I'm right on time. Because not only am I going to heal your brother, raise him from the dead, it's going to be a testimony of, of the power of God, and it's going to be a witness of God's kingdom coming to this earth, and the power over the kingdom of darkness that each of my believers can have through my name. More to it. Working things for the good of all. And and I just wonder if Lazarus had one of those um experiences. I went here, this is what I just don't know. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry, I don't mean to get with that being said, we cannot assume 
Jesus Christ, Father God, is going to enter things as we figure it out in our hands. This will be perfect. If you will do it this way, we've got to step back and say, Lord, your will be done. And help me through it. Because you're praying this, and all of a sudden it looks like this hurricane comes around you. And you're you're praying and you're testing. You're thinking, what's going on? Okay. Well, understand he's rearranging the pieces. For the best of all. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good. To those who love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Who are called. Have you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart? Have you answered that call? There's different callings we have. But that one main call is that call to accept Jesus Christ where the Holy Spirit convicts you and draws you and draws you and draws you. And it comes to a point right before you accept him, your heart's going, you know you need to go. But the devil's saying, no, 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 you don't. You don't. You're going to have to give up this. You're going to have to give up that. You're going to have to. No. Everything that you give up, you give up freely. You're not forced to give up anything when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart. You just become a new creation. And those things you have if you get a true true repentance you don't want those things. Some people even get delivered from addictions and, and get baptized in the Holy Spirit once they get saved. Not all do. Some people get saved and they still Pray for it and start setting and praying to have these addictions removed. <clears throat> I know people that's been saved but still had to deal with um, cigarette addiction and things. Why it's like that, I don't know. But the fact is, through that perseverance and praying and seeking the Lord and fasting, you want to get rid of an addiction and you're struggling with it because it's a stronghold. What it is, is a stronghold. An area of your life that the devil has a stronghold. Some kind of covenant or something was given or broke. Given at one time. It's going to take fasting. It's going to take fasting. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. you got to deny this flesh. This flesh does not want to go without eating. This flesh wants the comforts and, and pampers of life. This flesh will send you to hell. Sin shall not have dominion over you. This is a fleshly sinful body because of the fall in the garden. Do not let your flesh control your spirit or your soul. You want to have dominion and control over. You get in that word. You pray. You seek the Lord. And you fast. Push the food back. In doing so, it accomplishes many things. But the main thing, you start denying that flesh. And as you start denying that flesh, and you spend that time that you're denying that flesh, and you spend more time with the Lord Jesus Christ, as you deny that flesh, that spirit being inside you rises up. And when you do, you're going to start having better communication. It's not that you just fast to hear from God. That's one of the, the things that happens. You can hear clearer from God. When you start denying the flesh, because when the flesh, which is... You know, the part that gets demonized, the part that gets attacked. When you start denying this, you'll have more control over the flesh. You'll have more authority, more power, because you are able to hear Jesus Christ and Father God more. If Jesus had to fast, and he did, it talks about, about in one place they ask him, why could they not cast out this demon? And he was able to, this kind cometh not out but by prayer and fasting. And that's been removed in some of the ver versions of the Bible. And last time I checked, it was in KJV still. And that was when the the boy kept rolling around in, in, the, in the ground. They call it like an epileptic fit. But it was the demon throwing him down and thrashing him. Blindness, certain things. This kind cometh not out but by prayer and fasting. If Jesus Christ had to fast, 
What makes you think you don't? When you fast, though, when you're in a fast, unless you're doing like a corporate fast where you're announcing like a solemn assembly fast, something like that that Joel talks about, you're supposed to fast in your closet. You're not supposed to put on a long face and tell everybody I'm fasting. You're supposed to just go about normal. If somebody asks you to out and I think I'm going to pass right now. You don't go into. <clears throat> you are, and even some of you are praying. You're supposed to have that, that private time, that. Pray about all I'm saying. Please. In Jesus Christ's name. And when I say pray about things, don't pray with a predetermined, made up mind. You're not going to be deceived if you pray in Jesus Christ's name and pray for his truth. Because John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You will not be deceived if you pray in Jesus Christ's name and then try the spirits. Because we're instructed to try the spirits. 1 John 4, 1 through 3, 13 through 15. 2 John verse 7, 1 Corinthians 3. And I want, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I hear you, Lord. There was a lady that sent questions about trying the spirits. I have put this on another video that I have waiting for the Lord to tell me if or not. <clears throat> excuse me. Beat this. Whether or not to release it. I don't know. It's just it's ready just in case. But in this I addressed a lady that sent in the email. She's having trouble understanding about trying the spirits. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to explain it the way that I know. But again, you take it to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and she was having trouble understanding why demons can say this and why fallen angels. And, you know, so I'm going to break it down. In 1 John 4, 3. Okay, Lord, I hear you. We're going to go over the scripture right quick. I thought we were going to end this, but this, this is necessary. Those of you that heard it, have heard it, just bear with me. We're going to reach all we can. It's not about us alone. It's about helping our brothers and sisters. And I laid this for Lord Jesus Christ too because I wanted to understand myself. First John 4, 1 through 3. I'm going to read that right quick. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. False prophets. That stands for any kind of religious leader, teacher, anybody in position above you to help you. It, it, can, it can be anybody. Verse 2, hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Of God, created of God. That's what it means. Created of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the Spirit of Antichrist. Spirit of Antichrist. These are demons. Wherewith ye have heard that it should Come and even now already is in the world. And verse John, verse second John, second John verse seven also goes with this one. So when you ask the question, do this right here: Did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? When some, when you you've got a question you've asked, like is this preacher really anointed? Is he really one of your men, Father God? In Jesus Christ's name. Yeah, yes or no. Then you start answering these questions. A demon. Cannot say Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Because he is not created by God. Fallen angels were once godly angels. They were created by Father God. They can say Jesus Christ came in the flesh. The demons again. They are. From union with the fallen angels and women, maybe even men later, I don't know how that works, of the human race. Their bodies, when the flood came, my understanding, 
and God destroyed that, they became disembodied demon spirits. They cannot say Jesus Christ came in the flesh. <clears throat> we go down to verse 13 through 15. <clears throat> And understand, the Word of God says that, you know, God is the creator of all. Because everything starts from something God created. Kingdom of darkness cannot create. Man cannot create unless they have something to start with. God just speaks. He makes the invisible visible. That's the power of a true God. That's the power of our God. He's all-powerful. He doesn't have to have somebody else's stuff to create. Verse 13. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us his spirit. And we have seen and he testified that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God dwelleth in him and he in God. Okay, again, this is another one where the fallen angels were created by God. They can say, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They can say, Jesus Christ came in the flesh. The fallen angels can say both of those. Because they were created by God and God is in everything he created. They cannot say, Jesus Christ is the Lord, Jesus Christ is Lord, or Jesus Christ is my Lord. And we have scripture for that, 1 Corinthians 12, 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man, and I've got it written here, no man, speaking by the Spirit of God, calls Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. This means Jesus Christ, because it's talking about Jesus Christ all through here. And it talks about Christ actually a little lower. Jesus Christ. Because a fallen angel can look at you and say, Jesus is my Lord. Because there's many Jesuses. Who is he referring to? But Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Son of God, Jesus Christ because they do not have the Holy Spirit in them. They cannot say that. But it says, you're going to say, okay, but that says no man. In this particular area, the Greek word, in both instances, the Greek word is Uters, Strong's number G3762, and it means not even one man, woman, child, or thing, none, nobody, nothing, neither, Anything, never, not, can say that Jesus is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Fallen angels can't say that. Neither can the demons. Why do we, why do, we do all three? Sometimes you need to know what you're dealing with. And it's, it's, it's best because, again... <clears throat> There's three ways. Three ways. God likes number three. <laughs> For you to ensure you're hearing correctly. Alright. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I ask you to say this little prayer with me. It's nothing you do. Except in faith. Speak it out. In faith. Confessing it. So Lord. Let's say this prayer. Jesus Christ, speak to my heart, change my life, wash me clean with your precious blood. I believe you came to this earth by virgin birth and lived as a man, but God too. I believe you allowed yourself to be beat and whipped and tortured for me. And then you allowed yourself to be hung on a cross where you gave your life. I believe you are the son of the living God, Jehovah. And I believe you're coming back for me one day because you are risen from the dead. 
I confess you here and now before God and man. You are my Savior, my everything. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. And it's that simple. It's that simple. The gospel of Jesus Christ is so simple. You, If it had been some big, huge feat that took you years to accomplish something, people would be lining up to do it. You simply believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible if you believe. I recommend you get a Bible. Excuse <clears throat> me. Get a Bible. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to which translation. I prefer the KJV. There's a lot of things going translation things going on with all of them. You ask the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name to teach you the truth of His Word. And he will teach you. You'll use this copy as a guideline. But he'll teach you from the truth. Which is Jesus Christ in heaven. It says Jesus Christ is the word made into flesh. In, in John 1. I recommend you do that. Pray about whether the Lord wants you to go into a church. Or whether he wants to like minded people. But start building that relationship with Jesus Christ. Pray. Seek. Sing. It doesn't matter if you sing good or not. To the Lord Jesus Christ, if your heart is in the right place, it's beautiful. It's a sweet savor to him. We get so fickle in this world. That one's got a beautiful voice. That one's got, you know what? I've said this before. There's an elderly lady named Ari. She had, as far as the world's opinion, one of the worst voices. Crackly, old, out of tune. But when she sung, oh, hallelujah. The anointing would fall down. Lives would be changed. Deliverance came forth. I'll take that any day over a nice sounding voice. When somebody has a life that can line up and they get up and do something for the Lord and it brings down the anointing, the Holy Spirit is pleased and comes in. Yeah, that's my kind of person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to get off. This is running over an hour. Please pray about all these things. Seek the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what, what I said at the beginning about the lights. For the, the aurora lights, the northern lights. closer you are to the North Pole, the stronger they're going to be. Things are not always as the world says. So yeah, the closer around the North Pole, the center, remember. And that is where there's no time zones. That's point zero. All right. I'm told to hush. God bless. Stay under the blood. From Tennessee. And um, I'll be praying for you. And I desire godly prayers too. And. Um, greater is he that is in us. Than he that is in the world. Stay under the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah we're being persecuted. But look up. Our redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming. He's coming. And he will come for his bride. Those of us that have a further work will step out. But I pray daily, Lord, come get your bride. They've been through enough. They've been through enough. They've been through enough. He's coming. He hears our cries. God bless. In Tennessee.